here, though, I want to help you avoid getting stuck in a dead-end conversation that goes nowhere. The problem of a person who tries to explain inflations by saying it's caused by there being too much money always gets stuck when someone points out to him or her, wait a minute, wait a minute, the only way you get an inflation is if the businesses raise their prices. You've told me there's more money, you've got to tell me the rest of the story. Well, I'm here too. You can't tell me the Soviet Union is a planned economy because I can show you all the markets they used. And you can't tell me the United States is a market society because I can show you all the planning done led by the corporate sector, which you think of as the leadership, as it is in many ways, of American capitalism. Don't make use of a dichotomy that isn't there and never was. It was an ideological battle. The United States and the Soviet Union were at opposite ends of a political fight. And when that happens, you tend to demonize the other side, to simplify and to forget that we all have strengths and weaknesses, and then locate all the strength on your side and all the weaknesses on the other. It may be understandable, but in an adult, it's childish as well. Well, then where does that leave us with the dangling question, if planning versus markets isn't how you distinguish capitalism from socialism because they're both combinations in various proportions, then let me offer you what is a much better alternative way of thinking about this because the differences get clear. In a capitalist society, and I owe this to Karl Marx, who's the first one I know who figured this out. In a capitalist society, a tiny group of people, the owner, the partners, the board of directors in the corporation, make all the basic decisions. What to produce, how to produce, where to produce, and what to do with the output or the revenue if you sell the output. They make all those decisions. The vast majority of people in any business are excluded from those decisions. They have to live with the results, but they don't participate, just like they don't participate in setting the price of whatever it is they help to produce. They don't make the basic decisions, the rest of those decisions, either. That's the uniqueness of capitalism, the alternative that socialists originally, like Marx, had in their mind was a radically different organization of the workplace, whether it's a factory, an office, or a store. It's a democratic community. One person, one vote. All the basic decisions, what to produce, how to produce, where to produce, and what to do with the revenue you get, are decided democratically, one person, one vote, by majority vote. It is a radically different way of organizing an enterprise. It's the equivalent inside the enterprise of getting rid of the king to run the whole society and instead saying everybody has a vote to decide on who the elected representatives will be. Whoa! That decision made about the larger society has now, the socialists tell us, to be made inside the workplace. Then you'll have a socialism and a capitalism that nobody will confuse.